Hi, my name is Terry Harrington and I would like to welcome you to a new edition of Technically Speaking. Technically Speaking is a monthly program produced by St. Clair County RESA that features the St. Clair County Technical Education Center which is preparing to celebrate its 35th anniversary. We will show you what is offered and give you an in-depth look at the variety of programs of study provided at Tech. Not only will you get to meet and see what students are doing, you'll even have the chance to meet Tech staff members and alumni. In this edition of Technically Speaking, we are looking at another one of the relatively new programs offered at Tech, Mechatronics and Robotics. So you're probably wondering, what is Mechatronics? Well, it's a term that was coined first in 1969 to reflect the merging of mechanical and electrical disciplines. Today, it's much broader than that by also encompassing software and information technologies. In fact, many early robots have resulted from Mechatronics development. Like most technology-dependent jobs in Michigan and across the country, the job opportunities for those trained in mechatronics is rapidly growing. America's Career Info Net is projecting up to a 13% increase in the number of jobs available for mechatronics students over the next six years or so, and the wages are expected to be well above average as well. There is a whole lot more to mechatronics field than robotics. We will learn much more about mechatronics with tech instructor Bob Timmerman when we come back from this break, so don't go away. Welcome back to Technically Speaking. You can see we've made it down to the lab of the Mechatronics program here at St. Clair Tech. And joining me now is the instructor for the program, Bob Timmerman. Bob, welcome to the program. Thank you, Terry. How are you doing? Great. Now, Mechatronics, what a mouthful. Uh, yes. How does a person like yourself get involved in a profession like this called Mechatronics? Well, Mechatronics encompasses uh, a vast area of, of products manufacturing uh, industry and, and basically what it is it's, it's a combination or a blending of um, mechanics, electronics or electrical controls, uh, computer science, fluid power and you take all those and it encompasses what mechatronics is all about and it deals with automation uh, not only in the automotive industry but in, in uh, several other industries like medical field and, and the food products industry and things like that. And I think when we think of mechatronics, the one thing that comes to mind obviously are robots. Robots, yes. So, but it's a lot more than just that though. It is a lot more than just robots. Uh, you have robots that are integrated or interfaced um, with machine operation, mm -hmm. um, or you can have robots such as this right here. Uh, it's, this is a robot that's radio controlled. It has a vision system and it also has servo motors for motion control as far as tilting your camera up and down and rotating it back and forth. And you can do that from an off-site somewhere, just as my student is over there doing that. Okay. Joe. Now, what, what were you doing in this field prior to coming to tech? I, was wor I worked in several places. Uh, I was working in the welding industry with robots uh, at Lamb Technicon. I was working at uh, Cross Hewler in the, mach in the uh, metal removal industry. And what we were doing is making machines that either put together a car body or uh, made some type of a mechanical unit for a car such as an engine or uh, a valve for the engine or anything in that aspect. Okay. Now when kids come into this program, um, do they need to know everything about fluid power, electrical, mechanical, all of those things or they, can they kind of specialize? Uh, they can specialize in an area. Um, the important thing is to have the knowledge base of the different areas mm -hmm and you're always going to have a strong, one stronger area than another, which is another good thing about what Mechatronics is. It, it really creates and develops a teamwork application to where somebody might have a little stronger area than another, and that's where the teamwork comes together, where somebody might have good concept of mechanics, but another person might have a good concept of programming or robots. And if you tie those two people together, now you have a really good team going. I was going to say, this is one of those rare programs where you really have to have good team building skills. Good. You have to have good team building skills, and you have to be able to communicate well. And not only um, do you have to be self-motivated and self-initiated, -initi you also have to be able to take direction as well as give direction. Now, what, other, some of, what are some of the other skills that the students need to be successful in the me mechatronics field? Uh, they would have to have a good hands-on concept, uh, a little bit of mechanical ability, uh, somebody who maybe would like to know how something works within. Is this one of those programs that is going to continually to expand as technology increases and, and our knowledge base gets bigger? Yes, it is, and it's increasing as we speak. Uh, it's, it's expanding and getting larger and larger. 
uh, with the introduction of robots and the new technology and all that's going on around us, uh, it's, it's becoming so dependent on technology. Uh, anything from a, an automated home to, to an automated robot, uh, this is used in the government environment, um, to uh, um, anything that has to do with machine, wireless, your, your automotive vehicle has all the nice gadgets on it that kind of make you a little more relaxed when you're driving. So there's a lot of robotics and sensor embedded type software that, that goes on everywhere around and us. And look what we're seeing in the medical field today yes. where they're using robotics to do surgeries Surgery. and things. You know, yes. So it's non-invasive. So it's, yeah, I guess quite a field for these kids to be able to go into. Uh, X-ray uh, technicians mm -hmm. as well use robotics. Yes, great. That's, that's great. Is this program, like a lot of the other tech programs, they qualify students for state certification. Does this program have that as well, or do you actually go well beyond uh, what like a state certification would be? The first, actually it's an international certification through the Fluid Power Society. Okay. Uh, we will be able to, my students will be able to study and test for that if, if they choose to. Um, so that's really the, the, the main state certification, but you can get certified in electrical. Um, you can get certified in the fluid power, like I was saying, and you could get other state certifications as, for, as far as journeyman status, but not mm -hmm. directly out of tech. Okay. Now, you've got a pretty fancy device sitting here in front of us. Tell us a little bit about that and, and how you use this with the students in the classroom. Okay. The way I use this with the student is uh, basically we have remote control, which is radio control. Uh, we have the camera vision, the camera and our light vision right here, but the camera is based on a servo motor, so we talk about motion control. Okay. okay. So the motors are designed in here, and they can rotate, like I was saying before, and they can tilt this way as well. So what we do is we teach them how do we control this, where are we getting the information from. So we learn to program uh, that particular unit. And the same thing with the wheels. To get the wheels going, there's motors underneath for steering and for driving um, back and forth as well. And you could teach them to program the robot to go fast, slow, in between, accelerate, decelerate, and you get in uh, gear ratios and things like that as well. So there's many things that they can learn to program mm -hmm. within a little device like this. And imagine having hands-on opportunities like this really bring this whole subject to life for these kids. Yes, it does. You tie everything, all of the different uh, areas together when you talk mechanics, uh, programming, software, electrical. Mm -hmm. It's all built and designed right in. Okay, and I see we have another uh, contraption coming up front here. We do. Tell us a little bit about this one. Okay, this robot right here was built and designed um, with uh, two other tech students. One of my students, Tyler Simos and uh, Alex from uh, um, Energy Technology. And what we did here, this was from FIRST Robotics. Okay, and the FIRST Robotics competition uh, we were involved in at Kettering University and at uh, Athens uh, High School. Mm -hmm. And what the students did is they came together and they, we, they built this from a kit. And it was designed to be some type of a soccer type of robot where it had to score goals and defend a goal within uh, another arena of other robots. And they were playing against each other sure. in that sense. Now you said they designed it from a kit. How did this look compared to some of the other ones you're competing with? Uh, different and, and some were the same. You know, mm -hmm. uh, basically, of course, everybody had the same rectangular or square framework. What we noticed is some people had, like we have a narrow wheelbase down here where some of them were spread out um, in other directions. Some had units that had cylinders that would come extend up and down mm -hmm. uh, pneumatically and you had an air compressor that was actually designed right on board. Wow. So again, you're implementing your pneumatics, your electrical, your programming, and all of um, the mechanical skills that are involved with uh, chain, ga gear reduction, anything of that Great. sort. If a parent came up to you and said, hey, Mr. Timmerman, why should my son or daughter look into the mechatronics programming at Tech, what, what would you tell them? I would tell them that it's, it's a very largely growing field. Uh, and if they like to use their hands, there's a lot of hands-on practical experience. Um, in, in the machine industry or manufacturing, it goes way beyond the automotive industry as we are all ingrained in, in the Detroit area. Uh, we're talking like we talked earlier, we're, um, the health field, you have the food uh, services department. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff that entails robotics, mechanical, programming, all of this stuff has to be made or manufactured in some way. And we need uh, people with high skill levels to be able to go in 
and program and debug and troubleshoot and build and create these machines. So everywhere from engineering down to the technical person on the floor. We, we really have a great, great need for those people. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to be right back here in the Megatronics Lab and meet some of the students and see some of the work that they're learning here at St. Clair Tech. So don't go away. So, April, yeah? you know your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? Take out meals for just $12.99. Call them. Sherry Pearson. You are the sole surviving heir of the King of Montanopolis, and you are now worth $45 million. <gasps> I'm rich. This can't be real. Of course it's not real. Come on. Having money isn't about luck. Like that takeout meal. Cook at home instead, you can save thousands a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Welcome back to Technically Speaking, and as you can see, we're in the Megatronics Lab here at St. Clair County Technical Education Center, and joining me now is Joe Hall. Joe, welcome to the program. Hi. What high school do you go to, Joe? Uh, I go to KPEC. And you are a? Junior. Junior, okay. What, what drew you to Megatronics? What made you want to get into this field? Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, a feeling that I've had for a while. I mean, when I was in like a sixth grade, I've built like robotic arms and stuff like that. It's... I don't know, I guess it's been, just been a passion. Well, that's good. What, what do you hope to do with the skills that you're learning here? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, just have a good job, good life, retire early, hopefully. That, that always sounds good, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah, great goals. Well, what are some of the skills that you're learning here in this program? Uh, well, learning a bunch of skills. Like uh, right here, uh, we have uh, fluid power and electrical. We also learn controls engineering and computer science. And this is really one of those occupations that really crosses a lot of wide areas, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I mean, it can be from the auto industry to uh, roller coasters, you know, theme parks. You know. In a lot of one of the things we think of a lot of you know robotics and stuff, but really, you know, what you're going to demonstrate to us today is something that we really use every day in our lives. We probably yes. don't even know it, doesn't it? Yes. So tell me a little bit what, uh, what you're going to uh, demonstrate for us today. Well, this is a pretty simple circuit. Uh, well, this cylinder right here will extend, and uh, it'll show us, yes, uh, it's extended with these lights. And when I uh, press another button, it'll retract, and this red button will tell me, or green button, sorry, will tell me that uh, it's safe, I can work on it. Okay. So this is really not much different than what we'd see in a factory or any other regular type no. of application, just simplify the course, right? Yes. Okay. I notice you're not working with a schematic or anything, too. Is that normal, or is it... Because you know what you're doing. Uh, I know what I'm doing. Okay, this good. Is a, this is a fairly simple circuit. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, is this a, a pneumatic or a hydraulic type of device? Here uh, this is a pneumatic. So, so what's the difference between the two? Uh, pneumatic is uh, air, and hydraulics is either uh, water or oil, just some sort okay. of liquid. So, but principle still the same, just yes. a little more force with They're the water. They're both fluid liquid. power. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, let's put this thing together and let's see if we can make it work. All right. All right, first let's start with the uh, pneumatics. And of course the blue tubing is uh, where the air will be coming in yeah. and out of, right? Okay. And like with any kind of circuit, you've got an in and an out for uh, everything yeah. to flow around. Okay, good. Now we gotta get down to our electrical. Alrighty, need yeah. some cables over here? Yes, I what do. What do you need? Uh, give me a couple red. A couple of red, okay. Good thing I'm not too colorblind here. <laughs> Give me a couple of long ones. Here you go. Yep. Thank you. And again, you're building this just like an electrical circuit here. What are, what are these boxes for? Well, this is our power box. Okay. Uh, we take the power from our outlet, which mm -hmm. is over there. And this uh, box right here is uh, just a push button box. Uh, has some lights on it. Okay. And this would be this is really a simple version of a computer control as you'd have on a machine or yes. a device. To do whatever task you've set up. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Let's see.
And again, the whole idea is to get the arm of that uh, pneumatic device to, to open and close, is what we're yes. looking to do. Okay. And of course, each valve, each switch that you have all has leads that have to come to the controls. Yes. Okay. Now, I also know you're a state champion. Yes. Uh, for skills, you will say, is this a typical type of project that you had to do to, to win that championship? Yes. Uh, actually, this is part of a competition a couple years ago. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, they uh, released it to the public after the competition is mm -hmm. over, and we've been practicing with it. Good. Okay. How stressful is that competition? Was it a lot of fun? Um, the stress doesn't get to you until you get there. Oh, okay, sure. I mean, well, for me, because there's not too many uh, competitors in Michigan. Okay. And of course, as a result of that, you're going to be representing Tech at the 2010 Skills USA competition, right? Nationally. Yes. Okay, good. And can I get a couple of blue? A couple of blue. Here's one, here's two. Here you go. Thank you. Now, are these color coded for a particular reason? Yes, every single wire has a specific uh, code to it. Like, uh, Green is always the ground. Right here, blue is our uh, zero volt. Okay. Uh, red, our 24 volt reference. Joe, looks like you're about ready to set up. Let's see if fire this up, see if it works. All right. And that's just turning the airline on, right? Yep. Okay, got the power on. Yep. Our red light is on, so that means uh, it's closed, so we better not go over there, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now, now what's the next step? Well, press the button, see if it extends. All right. There we go. And it does. Just like you wanted to. Yep. Very and good. Green lights on. Retract. There you go. All right. Very good. Well, way to go. Yeah. Wait, thanks for showing us how to do this. And uh, we just wish you well when you go to the Nationals and representing tech. All right. Thank thanks, you. Joe. Thank you very much. Joining me now on Technically Speaking as we look into the Megatronics program is Tyler Samos from Memphis High School. Tyler, welcome to the program. Hi. And what year are you in, at Memphis? I'm in uh, 11th grade. 11th grade. What, what made you decide to go into mechatronics? Well, I seen this at an open house, so I was like, all right, this is cool. I should see what it's about. And I walked in, and I was instantly hooked. What do you hope to accomplish as a result of going um, through this program? Take what I've learned here and go and apply it to the field. And one nice thing with this, too, there seems to be a lot of job opportunities, despite the economy, for oh. people to have these kind of skills. Yep. It's... There's so many places and fields I could go from here. I could go into electrical, I could go into fluid power, I could go into computers, or I could go into, into mechanical. Is there any one part of it that you like better than the other? Um, no, not really. It's just I like the, all of it together. Now what about once you finish the program here at Tech? What, do you need to go on to a four-year college or a trade school, or, or well, what's the plan? I could, go, I could go into college, or I could go into a tech center, which I would like to go into. Um, it's, it'd be a little bit easier instead of having to take all of the math and science and all of the English uh, to, in order to get a degree, I could go to a tech center and get it in half the time. Great. So uh, we've got this big demonstration set up here for us. Tell us what we're going to do today. Well, right here we have a panel view and what this does is it allows me to control the three cylinders down at the bottom. I could extend the cylinders and then I could retract them. When I would hit a button, a si the panel view would send a signal to the PLC down here, and then it would, the signal would travel through these wires and into the solenoids on the far side there. And uh, whatever signal I tell the solenoids to do will allow the cylinders to either extend or retract. Now, how so, would this be applied, uh, say, in a factory or some kind of a manufacturing type of setting? Well, you could use this to control a conveyor belt. So you could hit a button and it could run a conveyor belt and with a series of switches you could have parts moving along the line and the switches could actually tell you where the parts are along the line. Mm, okay. So Now we have this other box up here. This is kind of what we used, used to, to see in a factory, right? Yeah. And this yep. is really the new, yeah. new piece? Yep. You could see, you would see this in most factories now it would be a lot larger but uh, well, we have a smaller one here because we don't do as many things as a fat normal factory would do, mm -hmm. but it's the, basically the same thing. But so for people operating machines today and some of those, this is really what they would be operating yep. from, right? Yep. 
Okay. Now, notice behind me, too, there was a laptop. Yeah, uh, the what, laptop. What role does that play in all of this? Well, the laptop allows us to actually write and create programs that we can send to the PLC, mm -hmm. and then we can run it from here, or we can run it direct, and we can see what's going on with our program mm -hmm. uh, through the computer, so we can troubleshoot it that way. Okay, I was going to say, so the computer allows you, if you have an issue someplace or parts not working it. right, yeah. That's where you'd find we it. We can right? use that or we can use this to try and solve it. A lot of technology in there. Yep. Now also see up here on the rack, we're not using it for this particular project. You see a lot of relays and different things. What, what would these types of things be useful? Well, for? you could use it for several different things. It's mainly um, just for other parts that you wanted to install. It should be for a conveyor belt or for a larger factory. They could install several switches. They can install um, hundreds of things. They could even connect connect more PLCs to it. Okay. Now, PLC so, stands for again. Programmable, programmable logistics controller. Gotcha. Okay. So, and so, putting this all together, that allows us to to do a lot of different tasks in a very safe manner, doesn't it? Yes. Um, safety is a big key, and this is the PLCs help us to maintain a safe work environment. Mm. So, it allows us to. Uh, monitor where people are and, and it kind of gets people away from mo moving parts and working parts so that way they don't get injured by uh, a piston or something that can kill them or hurt them. Okay, very fascinating. So, Why don't you uh, put it through its paces once again for us? So, it'd be so there it is. All right, and again, we're using pneumatics versus hydraulics in this particular Correct, application. Correct, because pneumatics are faster, and, but they don't have as much power as hydraulics, and they're a lot cleaner because they're using compressed air rather than oil or mm -hmm. water. Well, Tyler, thank you so much for taking yep, some time you. and showing us how all this works. Yep, not a problem. Very good, great. You believe this guy? Are you trying to start a wildfire? Sorry. Pass the honey. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Technically Speaking as we celebrate 35 years of St. Clair Tech. We hope you've enjoyed this look into the mechatronics and robotics program, and we'd like to thank the instructor Bob Timmerman and his students. To learn more about mechatronics or any other tech program, please go to the St. Clair Tech website at sctech.org. We hope to see you next time on Technically Speaking.